What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll continue working on our Rally Raffle Bike. Uh, in the last couple days, I actually took this thing out and uh, gave it a nice scrub. So you can see, it's actually pretty clean. Um, I got the body panels all wiped down as well. Uh, today, we're going to focus on the electrical system. What it actually takes to uh, upgrade from a 6-volt to a 12-volt system. So, if you guys ready, let's do it. Okay, so the first thing you should do when you work on any electrical system is get a wiring diagram. Uh, this one is for the Servetta 150 and the Jet 200s. Uh, make sure it's the right thing and make sure, you know, what's in the diagram is actually what's installed in the bike. So uh, there's a whole bunch of different variations of uh, wiring diagrams. So just like I said, make sure you get the right one. But uh, the first thing I'm going to do is ground the frame to the engine case and also to the regulator. So I made this little, little ground strap here. Uh, so we'll get that installed real quick and then we'll move on to uh, what exactly this wiring does. All right. <laughs> ground strap all hooked up using the factory ground point right here one end goes to the engine case the other end goes to the regulator now the rest of the wiring we're going to go back to the wiring diagram you see here this bike actually had an ignition key switch it's sitting right here okay and uh, actually mounts right here on the back um now unfortunately it looks like somebody Jimmy, this thing and I really don't think it works and it's very hard for me to get another one so we're gonna get rid of it so with that out of the picture um, go back to the wiring diagram you'll see that the wiring going to it which is the red one this wire here the green one which is this wire here and then there was a power wire which is this one the brown wire this actually went to the reg old regulator so we might have to get rid of all that other stuff and then there was a ground terminal right here. So red wire actually went to the six volt battery. The other end is over here where the battery usually sits. So we're gonna leave that alone, leave that unplugged because we don't, we're not using the six volt system anymore. Um, the green wire uh, right here in this terminal, this actually goes all the way up to the front here. And it's actually hooked up to this uh, kill switch as well. So before, it was actually the key and also this kill switch. Since we're getting rid of the key, uh, we're only going to use this kill switch. And the way to do that, all you really need to do is run this over to the CDI. There's this blue box over here. And the last green terminal that's unoccupied is actually the kill. So I'm going to plug that in there. And after that, I should be able to kill the bike with that switch up there on the handlebars. Uh, this gray wire here actually went to the um, turn signal flasher right here. Since we got rid of the turn signals, which is what these two wires are for, we don't have to worry about those or this. Okay. Uh, so right now we have the red wire eliminated, the gray wire eliminated. These two green wires, this pair, actually went to the HC coil. We're, we don't have an HC coil anymore, so... We don't have to worry about that, but just leave this hooked up and tucked away and tape the end because it's still live, I believe. Um, so after that, really all that's left is this wire right here. It might seem like a bunch of wiring, but it's just one wire. And it used to go to the uh, multiple points on the regulator and also the key. So technically all you need to do is cut this off, put a uh, spade terminal on it, and then plug it into the white port of the regulator, and then you'll have power of the bike. So uh, the other thing you need to do before you actually start the bike is change the bulbs to 12 volts. Because like I said, this is a six volt system. Uh, if you try to start the bike uh, have, with 12 volts hooked up to these bulbs, they'll just blow the bulbs. Uh, unfortunately on the headlight, is actually a seal beam six volt. So I can't just simply change the bulb. So I have another one that's on the way which you can change the bulb out. But uh, in the meantime, for testing purposes, uh, I have actually installed a h4 automotive uh headlight bulb 12 volts of course so yeah um like i said really all we need to do is plug this guy into the cdi plug this guy in the regulator and then we can start the bike to see if the lights work and of course after i change the bulbs all right so let's uh change this tail light bulb real quick just two screws on the lens this is your 
basic automotive bulb. So I'm changing it to the 12 volt version. So when you do this, make sure you have a dual filament bulb, okay? This means there's two wires inside this bulb. One is the running light, the other one is the stop light. So this should just click in just like that. All right, so back over here, I went ahead and plugged this green wire into the green port of that CDI. And now over here, before I actually cut all this stuff off, I'm gonna plug this into the regulator just for testing. If it actually, everything works like I think it'll work, then we'll cut everything off and actually clean it all up. So this is still just one wire, it just has a bunch of uh, <laughs> jumpers on it. So I'll leave that alone. But uh, yeah, now we can start the bike up and see if the lights work. Well, my first attempt at uh, testing the wiring uh, failed because I have a bad regulator. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I actually had a, an extra one laying around. So uh, we'll try this one. I have all the wires hooked up just the way I had it hooked up to this. So yeah, let's try this again. Like I said, the kill switch is up here now. No key. So I'll put the run position. So, you can see, it works now. Um, I didn't do anything different but change the, the regulator. Hooked up everything the same. So this is like our power wire right here. I got hooked up to one of the terminals on the regulator. The yellow wire coming from the stator to the yellow on the regulator. And then of course the ground. So something's wrong with this thing. I'm gonna try to figure it out, but if not, I'll just swap it for this one since I have it. All right, so there it is guys. Uh, it's not much to the wiring. Uh, as long as all your parts are good, it should work. Okay, I replaced the regulator with the new one. Uh, I have the wires all plugged up again. Uh, I actually cut off all that mess and just terminated this one brown wire. Uh, so like I said, uh, tap off this one because this is actually a kill switch wire. So if this grounds out while you're riding, it'll shut the bike off. Uh, the other ones I'm not too concerned about. This is actually the red wire going to the battery. Like I said, uh, it's not doing anything anymore. And this is the turn signal flasher. Same thing, not doing anything anymore. I'm just gonna zip tie these up nice and neat. Alrighty, I've got the wiring all cleaned up, all zip tied nice and neat, everything terminated. So uh, this section is done. We can move on to something else. All right, so I took the horn off the bike and actually disassembled it. I'm gonna try to clean up all this rust and see if it'll work again. But uh, if not, I do have another one coming. All right. All right, got the horn all cleaned up and reassembled. I'm gonna kick the bike over and see if it works. Well, I guess it works, but uh, it's not very loud. So uh, I know this is a six volt horn. I'm not sure if a 12 volt would do any better. So I'm gonna wait till that comes in and try that out. Otherwise, uh, this part is done. All right, next up, I'm gonna pull the cables out and actually send some lube down the, uh, the outers. And uh, hopefully everything is good there. Otherwise, I'll have to go and re replace them. So, that. Might have to replace them anyway, but uh, we'll see. Okay. All right, we got the inner cables pulled out. Uh, so, the, the outers are still there. I'm just going to spray some of this cable life lubricant down the uh, uh, outers 
and then I'll put the cables back in. All right. So the put the cables back in, make sure these are as straight as possible. Make your life easier. So let me see if I can get this. Okay, that's good. Hmm, <laughs> actually came out of this one. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, that cable's good. I'll do the other one since I pulled this out. All right. All right, now I've got the uh gear selector cable is all lubed up um, and also the throttle cable I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, clutch and also the brake cable so pretty easy we just have to disconnect this lever and then uh, pull the cable out spray lube put the cable back in so we'll do the two of these and then we'll reattach it to the case all right now we've got all the cables all reconditioned nice and uh, lubed up I'm gonna reattach them to all these linkages back here uh, so uh, there used to be little rubber cable protectors they're all dried up and messed up so I got new ones from uh, Sokopia okay so I've got the three cables back here attached to the engine case the linkage um, you can see the clutch cables hooked up two gear cables all new uh, rubber cable protectors I've also started the bike and actually made sure uh, the clutch is okay and uh, it shifts into gear so this should be good to go now that I have one thing left to do is uh, recondition this brake cable. I'm going to remove it and then I'll grease it up and reinstall it. All right, I'm going to try to disconnect this from the rear and pull this cable out like that. So pull the cable out. I got the cable out. I'm going to go ahead and grease it and reinstall it. All right, now I can reinstall it. <clears throat> okay, we're running back out the front here like that. Retest the back. We're done there. All right, just like that. All right, we got the cable out the front end here. Um, I'm going to put the leg shield on before I actually install the pedal because I know when I remove the leg shield, this thing actually was a pain in the butt to get around. So I'd rather not mess with it. And uh, I'll go ahead and actually thread this through the bolt, put the new cable protector on, and then I'll just leave it dangling. And then we'll reattach it to the frame once I'm done putting the leg shield on.
All right. I'm gonna thread this through so we'll have a leg shield in the way. I don't think that's the way it is. It goes like this. There you go. There you go. All right, I got the new cable protector installed. I have it attached to the actual pedal, but like I said, I'm gonna leave this thing down like this while I reinstall the leg shield. All right, so I have the leg shield here. Uh, I did give this thing a nice scrub as well. And uh, so to attach the leg shield to the frame, there's actually these little rubber bumpers at each spot. And uh, these are stuck on, so I'm not gonna remove them. I'm just reinstall them the way it is. Okay, I've got the leg shield all bolted back up along with the fender. I did end up using the original hardware. Um, I cleaned up the threads and I used new nuts and washers on the other side. Uh, I just wanted to keep the old school look, but uh, I think it looks pretty good actually. Uh, so for the rest of the bike, I'm still waiting for a headlight. I have one on order uh, that can allow me to retrofit the 12 volt bulb to it. I should be here maybe next week. Side panels should be painted this week. My guy, uh, the temperature should be good enough for my guy to do it. Um, Scooter Mercado stuff is also coming this week. Yeah, Dave is hooking us up with a brand new seat. Also three brand new tires and tubes. So uh, yeah, I think uh, it's coming along nicely. But uh, if you guys were thinking about coming to the rally, uh, there's only 30 days left before registration closes. Spaces are limited. I think we're at 75 now and the host is only allowing us 120 20 people so uh <laughs> if you plan on coming you need to hurry up and register but uh yeah that's gonna be it for tonight guys uh if you enjoyed these videos please don't forget to like and subscribe i'll catch you all next time